Hello once again, guys. A lot of you, <clears throat> a lot of you have been asking about container vans, tiny homes, budget house. So, and dami mga topics na kailangan natin pag-usapan. But today we are going to talk about specifically container vans. We're gonna dive deep into it. We're gonna see if it's actually a good option. How to go about it? How to build your own container van home? Is it faster? Can you do it yourself? What are the advantages and disadvantages? And is it really cheaper? That and more we're gonna talk about today. Of course, hindi lang tayo dito because syempre malakas kayo sa akin. So I actually had a container van prepared and we're going to go there right now. What up? This is what she looks like. Ay, naka. Sige na lang din. Anyway guys, we are here at our construction facility where we have our vans. We use them to rent out spaces or just for storage areas and we use them as bunkhouse as well so I feel like I have a good input on what these things can do this one I made them empty this out especially for today so let's come on in Whoa. so a, a typical container van like this this is a 20 footer van there are actually three typical sizes a 10 footer a 20 footer and a 40 footer the 10 footer right now has been discontinued mostly. It's very hard to find it, but you can easily find 20 and 40 footers. Okay, so 40 footer is 145,000. This one, a 20 footer, is 85,000. Now, if you look at it from that perspective, it's mura ang container van, but there are a lot of things to do pa for you to have a livable container van. But first, a container van is very, very strong. Meron siyang mga boost on all the corners. And then, this is made of Corten steel. If you remember Corten steel, this is the exact steel. Love, do you know this? I know it very well, sir. This is the exact steel that we are using for our fence. And if you've been following this channel, you would know that Corten steel or weathering steel is a type of steel that rusts but does not rot. Now they do that because these container vans will be in extreme weather in the ocean when they're shipping out items. So it is made to survive the elements talaga. So good point on container vans being very strong, being very typhoon resistant, earthquake resistant. Yes, that is true. Now a container van has corrugations here. This is corrugated. This is corrugated. The top is corrugated and that helps with the strength of the container van. Okay, so nakita natin sa container van na may corrugation siya. Let's talk about corrugation for a moment because I feel like it's a very interesting topic. I don't know if it's going to be interesting for you, but it's my video. <laughs> so, let's say for example, this is your plain sheet of metal. Diba medyo flimsy siya. But, by adding corrugation, tada. Pigla siyang nagsistiffin, especially on this axis, this side, di ba? So, it actually gives strength. Kaya na niyang tumayo, in a way. <laughs> this is also the reason why yung mga carton boxes na nakikita natin is may para siyang corrugation dito sa gitna. So, if you were to remove this part, kikita natin na may corrugation siya. It's to give it stiffness. So, hindi siya mabilis ma-fold o masira. Hmm, now you know. Now let's go inside to see what needs to be done to actually make this into a livable space. First thing you notice when you're inside a container van is that it's really, really hot. Very, very hot. <laughs> we are currently under a warehouse. So imagine this in the middle of your property without anything else, without any roof it will get extremely hot. You're basically in a metal box and this ones will be magnifying the heat. So that is one problem. 
Now, this cannot be solved by ordinary insulations, those small foam insulations. I feel like those are not enough. What you need is PU foam, meaning polyurethane. What they do is they spray this, this side and the other side, as well as the roof. Jan palang sobrang tumataas yung price. Second thing you will need to do. You would need to insulate it from sound and you would need to open up other areas of the walls so that there won't be echo. But the flooring is where magkaka problema tayo because living inside a place where everything vibrates, hindi siya ganun katahime. So again, you would need heat insulation and sound insulation and for the floor you have to fix this up probably pour concrete or just find a way to stop it from vibrating we're outside because chris felt like her yung mata niya medyo maanghang this one is probably very dusty and also since it's a shipping container hindi natin alam kung ano ang nilagay dyan beforehand diba shipping containers can be used to ship chemicals or even worse garbage so, if you want it livable, dito it's not that important because it's going to be stored with things. But if you want to be able to breathe clean air inside, kailangan linisin to, tanggalin lahat ng mga floors because all those chemicals will seep into the steel. You would need to sandblast it. So, sandblasting would remove everything, mga paint, everything on the surface. And then you have to repaint it. Now, a shipping container when you buy with those prices that I have said doesn't look like this. This one is already repainted. So, medyo rusty pa siya, medyo ayusin pa ng marami to get it aesthetically pleasing. So, it's not as cheap as you think na. Diba, sinabi ko, this is 85,000. Hindi siya ibig sabihin na 85,000, sold ka na. 85,000, probably with the PU foam and everything, that's maybe, I don't know, 100,000 for the PU foam. And there are other items pa na kailangan natin gawin. Okay, solve na tayo. Na sandblast mo na. Uh, may PU foam ka na, insulated ka na. Ano pa kailangan mong gagastusan? You need a CR, you need a shower. It's not yet included sa 85,000 natin. Meron pa tayong septic tank outside. Meron pa tayong kailangan gawin ng mga drainage systems for it to be actually functioning as a home. And you have to put water line. And this one, like you see right now, we've placed electrical lines already. So, marami pa siyang mga konting-konting bagay na kailangan natin gawin. Now, if you notice also, this is not yet fixed to the ground. These ones. So, you would need to somehow fix it to the ground, maybe weld something, bolt it up, or put foundations on these things so that it will be safe from very strong winds from toppling over or earthquake from moving from side to side. So, that is another spin. Although maganda siya kasi it may malaking opening siya from one side, for it to be very well ventilated, you have to at least have two sides that are open. One in, one out. You would need to cut out portions of the walls and fix windows, so another spend. Sorry, kailan kong umakyat ng konti. Wait lang. Now, if you notice, the top part of this container van is fairly flat. So, ibig sabihin yan, may chance na magpool ang water. You don't want water to pool because that is grounds for dengue to breed. Second is, it's very loud. If, imagine being inside and it's raining really hard. It's gonna sound very, very annoying inside. Hindi ka makakatulog. So, what would most likely have to happen here is that you'll have to add some sort of roofing that is sloped to one side. The rain water will have to be able to be caught in a trench or a drainage system. So that is another spend. So when you consider that you have to spend pa for the plumbing lines, yung mga showers, yung mga kitchen, yung cabinetries, all the furniture that goes into a house, you would have to spend that whether it's a container van house or an ordinary house. You would come to see that it's really not that cheap. I would say it is about just as expensive as any ordinary house. Major disadvantages would be you're fixed with this, you're fixed with the size that they give you, whether 20 footer or 40 footer. If there were savings, I would say it's very minimal. The advantages though is that it's very strong, it's stronger than ordinary construction methodologies, it's fast, 
Siyempre, it's going to be faster because the shell is already there. But again, there are lots of other things to do. So this is one option of what you can do. This is not a container van home. This is one option of something else that I recommend if you want a quick, easy way to build a house. These are prefabricated homes that can be bought overseas. Meron ding mga retailers dito sa Pilipinas. It's para mga panels lang na inaassemble. If you pan back, back, it's something very similar to that. <laughs> okay, so with everything mentioned about the advantages and disadvantages of a container van home, do I actually think it is worth it? For me personally, if you're looking at saving money, it may not be as sulit as we think it is. Because we have to remember that the shell, it's probably around 20% of the cost lang of the structure. Kasi siyempre, gagastos ka pa ng mga items inside the home like furniture, like your sink, yung mga faucet, yung mga toiletries, all the finishes, all the lighting is all the same. Even if you decide to have a container van home or a regular home or a whatever home you decide, these are things you'll be spending on regardless of ano yung shell ng bahay mo. At ito lang talaga ang hindi ko maalis sa isip ko. If it is actually cheaper, and if it's cheaper by a lot, bakit hindi siya ginagamit widely by low-cost housing developers as a business model or as a way to entice buyers and give them a cheaper option? If it's really cheaper, syempre, ginawa na sana nila yun. So, who is this for? I feel like it is useful mostly for temporary facilities. We used it in light block when we had to have a temporary office while we were transferring to our new office. We use it in our construction company, High Speed Construction, when we have the needs for bunkhouse or temporary housing because kaya siyang ilipat easily. It is helpful for clinics, bunkhouse, emergency response teams when they need to have a place quickly and easily to operate in. If you enjoyed this video guys, hit the thumbs up button, click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be alerted with all our future budget home videos and more. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. And since you like the outro, I'll see you later.